Thank you for tuning into the Exploding Worship Arts Podcast. I'm Tamika Hall, and here at TamikaHall.net, the goal is to empower performing arts ministries worldwide to effectively minister the Word of God in 3D. So it is January 1st of 2014. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you're like me, but you know, this day kind of crept up on me, and I, I just found myself saying, Oh my goodness, we're on the we had the with the last day of the year for 2013 and now here we are waking up to 2014 and I actually started this particular post podcast devotion I think it's really all of those things wrapped up into one and I started that a couple of days ago and I felt like this would be the perfect post to kick off 2014 and so today we're going to be discussing five things that successful performing arts ministers do every single day. Now let me just tell you very quickly, I came upon this because I love Dave Ramsey. I love the fact that he teaches about finances and success and everything that he does is based on biblical principles. I really enjoy that. Now he recently shared Tom Corley's list of 20 habits of the rich versus the poor. And I was going to simply kind of share those different principles, but then as I kind of started typing those out and thinking about my own thoughts of them, I started thinking about us as the performing arts minister. And so as we forge on to be successful in life, Christ, and our ministries, I really think that a lot of the same principles can be applied to us. And so what I wanted to do and what I did actually is I revamped the list of 20 habits and I compiled them into a list of five things that every successful performing arts minister should do every single day. Now, these aren't necessarily in any particular order because they're all important. Again, we should be doing all of them every single day. And by me putting this out there, it doesn't mean that I am perfect at doing all of these. This is something that I'm endeavoring to make sure that I make it part of my daily success recipe in order to effectively minister the word in 3D. So let's go ahead and kick it off. The Number one. The performing arts minister understands that the body is a temple of God, okay? You know, we know that our body is a temple, and because of it being the temple, we have to take care of it. You know, that, that has to deal with everything that we put on the inside of our body. That's what we put in our mind, you know, because we understand that we need to be consecrated and we need to be used. And as a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have a God, and ye are not your own. So we understand as the performing arts minister that everything that God has gifted us to do, has anointed us to do, is to be used for his glory. So because of that, we need to make sure that we take care of ourselves. I just want to point out a couple of the wealthy principles, and you'll be able to see all of these right here on the blog for the wealthy principle, this is interesting to me, 70% of the wealthy eat less than 300 junk food calories per day, whereas 97% of poor people eat more than 300 junk food calories a day. Wow. that That's something pretty amazing to think about. Here's another one. 76% of wealthy people exercise aerobically four days a week, whereas 23% of the poor do this. All right. Also, 80% of the wealthy are focused on accomplishing some single goal every day, whereas only 12% of the poor are are doing this. Now, you know, I kind of hate having to say the wealthy versus the poor, but if we're looking at this from a spiritual sense, you know, when we eat that junk food every day, if we look at that spiritually, what are we putting on our in, on the inside of our body? Are we watching things that would equate to the junk food? You know, are we watching things that would take over where our spirit man should be very strong. Um, and in terms of aerobics, that is both the physical, um, we can take that literally and we can do that spiritually. So are, are you exercising? Are you um, really trying to get in shape? Because honey, we need to be in shape in order to effectively minister. So I felt like those were really important. The second thing is that the performing arts minister understands that education is essential. Now, for those of you that have been following me for a while, you understand I do a lot of stuff. You know, God is, I'm, I'm grateful that he has gifted me with the ability to do a lot of different things. So I dance, I choreograph, I sing, I write songs, I write stage plays, I act. You know, I really appreciate, I totally appreciate what God has allowed me to do. But one of the things I do understand is that education is essential. And so I am always 
working to better myself. And so it's always interesting to me when I see someone that may praise dance and they talk to me and they say, well, you know, I praise dance at church, so I don't go to school for those things. Or I sing at church, so I don't worry about exercising my voice. And Second Timothy 2 and 15 lets us know that we should always study our craft, create goals for ourselves, and strive to do things in excellence. So Second Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, I want to just very quickly go through some of the wealthy principles. 60%, 63% of the wealthy listen to audiobooks during their commute to work. 81% of the wealthy maintain a to-do list. 67% of the wealthy write down their goals. 88% of the wealthy read 30 minutes or more each day for education or career reasons. 86% of the wealthy believe in lifelong educational self-improvement. So if you think about those things that the wealthy understand, this, this is what the people understand in terms of just getting rich. What are we doing every day to be rich and richly blessed in the kingdom of God? That's kind of what we need to think about when we talk about education. You know, just because God has gifted us with the ability to sing does not mean that we stand in front of the people without being prepared. So that means that you're listening to different praise and worship songs if you're a praise and worship leader. If God's gifted you with the ability to write, are you writing? You know, and are those songs being used to effectively educate the people that you stand before? Because that's what we do every time we stand in front of the people, whether we sing, dance, write something, whether we're acting. It's really a form of education for those that are able to, number one, enjoy it. Number two, be blessed by that. So, again, the performing arts minister understands that education is essential. The third thing is that the performing arts minister understands the importance of being led by the Holy Spirit. You know, and I'll be honest with you, this is something that I in the past and, and I pray not in the future, but these, this is something that I've struggled with is just kind of making the wrong decisions because I've stepped out and I've listened to Tamika and I've not listened to the voice of God. And of course, our comforter that's been sent by way of the Holy Spirit. I want, I'm going to jump to the wealthy principle very quickly because this is so interesting to me. 6% of the wealthy say what's on their mind, whereas 69% of the poor say whatever they feel. So I felt like that was really interesting because before we were looking at where the wealthy, they do more of the thing versus those who do not have as much money. But James 1 and 19 says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to do, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And that word is just for me. It's just for me. So you think about it. If, if we understand the importance of being led by the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to equate this to you're actually standing before the people and you're ministering to the people in some capacity. At any moment, we need to be able to flow with the Spirit. So that means that, for example, if you are a praise dancer, you may have prepared a specific dance. But let's say that the service is going in a totally different direction. Are you at a level where you can immediately switch and flow with that? Also, are we at a level where we have been before God, we've been in his face, and he gives us the song that we're supposed to minister so that it automatically just flows right into the service and it helps to prepare the way for the, the preacher before he gets up? So the other thing is, you know, when, when we're dealing with the creative arts, we always deal with people who sometimes will question what we're doing. We have to always be uh, dealing with people who say that they like something or they don't like it. Well, first of all, we understand that everything that we do, number one, is unto the glory of God, right? So sometimes we have to put in that balance. When do I say something and when do I keep quiet? And I'll tell you, it's been, it's been really interesting. I've had people come to me and say, I need the praise of worship to sing different songs. I'm tired of hearing those same songs. Or I need, why do you, why do you sing like that? Why are you so radical when you sing, Tamika? Why do you dance like that? And sometimes these things can be very hurtful. And let's be honest, sometimes it can be very offensive. But in our being slow to speak, um, quick to listen, slow to anger, then we are modeling, number one, the principle of God, but we're also modeling that wealthy principle. So wh whereas this is not necessarily 
increasing our pocket it is increasing our spiritual pockets so we can continue to do kingdom work the fourth thing is that the performing arts minister understands the importance of supporting others oh my goodness this is huge i want to ask you do you support others in ministry or do you find yourself always wanting people to support you you know this support can be by our attending special events even social media social media is huge and i always find it funny when you know different groups that i belong to where you always have that one person they're always pushing their product they're always pushing their own conference their own book their own their own devotional services but they never support other people who are doing the same thing god didn't just give us us as an individual a, a ministry He's, he's put something in all of us to spread the word of God. That is our job. We work hand in hand with the Lord to, to spread his word. You know what I mean? And so he depends on us to be able to do that. And so it's so important. It's so interesting to me when people don't support others, but they want everybody to come to their conference. They want everybody to buy their latest book. They want everybody to watch their latest video on YouTube. And yet you don't really see where they support anybody else. It doesn't cost you anything to support people. As a matter of fact, Psalms 133 and 1 says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. The world needs to see us unified. There are so many stories out there. And if you, are, uh, if you follow my news site gospelinsidernews.com then you see I report on news every single day so there, there's so much negative press so so many negative things that are taking place just in the Christian community that sometimes it will put a bad taste in the mouth of those who are in essence on the fence about whether or not they want to um, they want to join in the family <laughs> join in the, the the Christ family and so it's important for us to be linked together, to be unified, to support each other, because that is what draws people to Christ, okay? This is interesting, the wealthy principle. 9% nine, 9 of the wealthy network five hours or more each day versus 16% of the poor, okay? So the wealthy, when they understand that in order to continue to gain their riches, and these, are, these are earthly riches, they understand that they have to constantly network with people. They understand that they need to let people know that they're relevant. And so for us as the performing arts minister, our job is to show that God is relevant, to show that he is relevant in our lives. And so if we understand that principle of how good and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity, then we're on the right track. And finally, the performing arts minister implements good spiritual habits. This is one, again, I did not put these in any type of order based on importance, but this is one that for Tamika, this is one that I always have to keep in check because as we balance our life, as we balance ministry, as we balance our own personal goals, it's so important that our relationship with God is paramount. So, you know, I have to make sure that I don't get so caught up in the actual act of performing. You know, again, if I'm singing, if I'm, if I'm dancing, if I'm choreographing something, I can't get caught up in the actual performance side of it only that I forget to always minister unto God, you know? Um, so when we are implementing good spiritual habits, what are those? That's prayer, fasting, reading our Bible. It's funny. My, my Bishop last night was preaching and he, he sure enough preached us into the new year. And he talked about in order for us to really get to the breakthrough that we're supposed to experience in 2014, we got to hang out with God. You know, how fun is that? We have to hang out with him. So if you dance, do you dance in your quiet time with the Lord? If you sing, do you sing to the Lord? You know, if you write, do you find yourself reflecting on those things of God? You know, and so implement good spiritual habits. Some of the habits that the wealthy have is that 44% of them wake up three hours before their work day. Now, I don't know about that yet, <laughs> but that's what they do. 84% of the wealthy believe that good habits create opportunity and luck. Now, I'm going to, number one, let's do this. 44% of the wealthy wake up three hours before their work starts. I have a difficult time waking up uh, three hours ahead of time, but one of the things that I'm endeavoring to do in this year is I am going to wake up before my normal start time of 
getting prepared to go to work in order to spend some of that quiet time with the Lord. Okay, that's that's what we do. And then the other one, 84 percent of the wealthy believe that good habits create opportunity and luck. L let's flip that around for us. As the performing arts minister, one of the things that we have to understand, one of the things that we have to be able to model for the people that God allows us to step in front of is that we understand that by implementing good spiritual habits, that we don't believe in luck. What we believe in, we believe in blessings. And so we understand that if we implement good spiritual habits, that God is going to overflow. He's going to create that overflow of blessings in our life. And so that's what's so important for us to always keep in mind. Well, listen, it's the first day of the brand new year. What are you going to do in order to become that successful performing arts minister that you want to be? I'm so excited that you were here with me. Make sure that you're always staying up to date with what's happening at TamikaHall.net. Tune in every single day. Well, don't tune in, but visit it every single day. I always have something different that is being pushed on the blog, whether it's a devotion, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a video, so that we can continue to strengthen our ministry so that we can then strengthen the kingdom of God. So be prosperous in 2014, stay empowered, stay motivated, and stay blessed.